Yo, what up guys, OPTC Daniel here, back at it again with a deck profile video. So today we're gonna do my main man, Edward Newgate. I've played this leader exclusively since OPO2, till release of OPO5, now I play Purple Luffy. It's time for something else, but still, this leader I took to the 3-on-3 three three in Germany at DreamHack. We got 9th place. So, it definitely performed really good, especially since I played against like, 5 Sakasukis in the entire 3-on-3 uh, three three cup. But yeah, a uh, really good leader, made some changes from last time, and yeah, since we got top 46 and top 16, got the prize cards, uh, we didn't make top 6, top 6 got the Zoro, but I, but I already have the Zoro from Glasgow, because I got 5th place there with my team, so I got these now extra, so not really sure what I'm gonna do with these. They are really uh, Pringled, like chips, you can eat these, they are really uh, Pringled, but yeah. I will see what I will do with those cards. Maybe sell, buy some other alt arts. But yeah, let's jump right into deck profile. I will tell you my matchups or games I had in between, I guess. For our one drops, we of course play Inami. Uh, Nami came back from being banned, so now we got two searches in the deck. Really good cards. This will search your rush units and also your events. So with this, you want to search your events mostly. And then we go to our other one costs. We play, of course, four times Izo. So Izo is also a searcher like Nami, but Izo is limited to Whitebeard Pirates card. It can grab the events, but we don't play any events from Whitebeard, we only play the units, the characters, so this will find all your characters. So with Nami, really want to go for the events, and this you want to get the 9 cost Marco, Marco, or Ace. Then for our other 1 cost, we only play 3 times Makino. So Makino doesn't really come up. All too lot, so it's pure your ticket counter, but still, if you can resolve it, I actually did. I attached two hit for game for 11 or something at the two versus three, it was really nice. But uh, with three of them, you won't really come a lot of them in your hand, you will bo mostly bottom deck them or use for ticket counter. But if you have them in hand, keep it for end game. If you have a one cost unit, you can just swing if they leave it online or on the field. But yeah, good card, of course. And now we go into the MFVP of the entire format, we play two times Robin. Uh, last time I only played one Robin in my list and I played two Sea Quakes because they were both searchable with their own searcher. But still, Robin with Nami is just chef's kiss. This, this is the counter against uh, Rebecca, the blocker from Sakazuki, because it KOs a thousand or less. So on play you can KO it. It's only a one cost, so really cheap. It's a body, you can Makino it and it's searchable. And yeah, in other matchups you can use for 1k counter. Really good card. This won me two Sakazuki games. And for our last one cost, we only play one Otama. Uh, this is pure for an extra 2k counter. We don't really play a lot of 2k counters in the deck. It's mostly just evens. But if you need to reduce something, you can play this to combo off with Ace or with your um, 9 cost or with the Robin. But still, only one. And also look at the 6 sleeves I have. Oof. Shout out to Balin. Got him from Japan for me. Now we go into our 3 costs. We play 2 times Rush Zoro. So a lot of people were uh, questioning why I didn't play Rush Zoro in my last list. It was because I underestimated the card. I decided to play two of them in the 3-on-3 three three, and it worked really well. I had this one game against Katakuri, like in the higher tables. Um, he had four lives. He had two 10-drop big moms on the field, one Katakuri. I had two 9 costs on the field, zero life because he big momed my life. He passed turn and I top decked the Rush Zoro. So, <clears throat> my opponent had 4 lives, so I basically just swing with leader 6, he took it, play this, attach 1 don, swing for 6, he took it, played Luffy from hand with 1 don, attack for 7, he took it, and then 2 times with the 9 cost, 2 times 10, and it was game. He didn't have any single counter or uh, badge or blocker from life, so that was really insane, because I thought I was 100% uh, defeated that turn, but thankfully for the top deck for Zoro, I won the game. Really cool. Then we go into our 4 drops, of course, we play 4 times Marco Blocker, came back from being restricted at 1. Uh, yeah, it's just your blocker that can come back on the KO, uh, if this card is sent to the trash, you can trash a white by Pirates card, play it back rested. Um, yeah, it's a good card, but if you use it too early, it will come back on the field and they will just redirect all their attacks on this card. So use it wisely, use it to block the last attack, or... If you have a lot of cards to bring, to bring it back or they will ignore it, just play it. But I mostly use it for the 2K, for the 1k counter, because yeah, Sakazuki can just get rid of it. 
Then for other four costs, we play four times Josu. Josu is your Whitebeard Pirate searchable to kick counter. And also it has Rush if you have one life or less. So now if you have two, two lives or less. So for one Don, it gains Rush. It's basically a uh, worse ace. Because for four Dons plus three, that's seven. You get 7k Rusher. So it's basically just a worse ace. But if it comes up, it comes up. And if not, to kick counter. Then for our five costs, we play... No, wait, I switched them up. We play, of course, the Rush Luffy. Uh, probably the second best rusher in this entire deck. I think in this format now, Ace is way better. Like, I was very uh, loudy about Ace being bad in the last format and this card being way better. But now it's the other way around. Uh, but yeah, unblockable. Uh, yeah, attach two dons when attacking your opponent. Cannot activate the blocker, so you want to use this for removing bodies. If they have left cards on the hand, or if you want to swing into their life, if they have blockers for a game. Really cool card, and... To be fair, uh, now I know why people don't play different alt arts because I searched one, uh, I I searched this one and I had this in hand, so I wanted to play this, but then my opponent knows oh great he has another one in hand, so it is really terrible that I decided to play different alt arts. Just play one alt art the entire game, so that is definitely a lesson I learned. But yeah, good card. You wanna swing. Uh, when you go first, you play Whitebeard, I mean the Whitebeard Searcher, or Nami, you get uh, Zoro, you hit 6-6, six, six, or 5-6, six, and then you go 6-5 uh, Luffy, so it's 6-5-6, six, six, and then 6-5-6-7, six, six, etc, etc, you just want to play a rusher every turn. But in case your opponent has some annoying cards you want to remove early game, you play of course the 4 times Marco. Uh, on play, KO a 3000 character or less. And on the KO, trash a white beard event, so it uh, trash an event card, so it comes back. So it has a little bit more restriction than the Marco blocker. Marco, you can trash any cards, but this has to be a white beard pirate event card, or just an event card. I mean, sorry, just an event card you have to trash. We do play a lot of event cards, so this will definitely be a sticky boy. Now we go into our six costs. For our six costs, we play three times Sanji. Uh, this card is really good. It's just an extra rusher if you don't have the Luffy or the Ace. Only requirement is on play if your opponent has a character with 5,000 or more, which they usually will have. Then this character gains rush. And if not, just use it for a 1k counter. It's also just a uh, bad Zoro. I mean, a bad Ace. Then we go into the best card of the entire deck. We play four times Ace. My man. But yeah, uh, Ace is really good. On play, yo. Uh, give up to two of your opponent's characters, minus 3000 power. Then if your leader has the white beard pirate, pirate type, it gains rush. So of course that's rush in our deck. So uh, yeah, just play it. You can swing with your Namis, with your Isos into 2k bodies if there were 5000 power on the field. Or just play it on blockers or if you want to get rid of blink blockers. No one will defend any card that has minus reduction. Especially if you can rush into it, so you can swing with your leader 6 into 3, 7 into 3 or whatever. Really good card. Uh, it's also used to end games, of course. Best card in the entire deck. And then, once again, like I said, I should really just play my other playset, because I have 4 of these. But still, I love this artwork. Maybe I need to get 2 more of these. But yeah, uh, 9 cost, 3 times. In my last video, I said that 9 cost wasn't really that good because Sakusuki can just remove it. But still, the pressure it gives makes your leader an 8k. They won't swing at you. They will take an entire turn to remove this card. Really makes it playable. And against yellow and other games, it's just a free game. Um, yeah, on play, uh, your leader gains 2000 power until the end of your next turn. So when you are, when, you're, when your opponent plays, you are still at 8k leader. So it's really good. And then at your turn, it comes to, to 6. And you don't need to take your life. So if you, played, if you played on 2, you will just keep 2 lives. If you played at 1, you will keep 1 life. And then, of course, don't 2 when attacking. K up to one of your opponent's characters with a power of 3000 or less. But yeah, uh, this card, if you can chain it, really good. Like I said, against the Katakuri, I had 2 on the field. So that was really nice. And now we go into our event cards. We, of course, play the one bad kick course manner. We play a lot of events and we play a lot of non-counters. Like we play... Two times Zoro, uh, four times the Luffy, four times Ace. So that's like eight, nine, that's, that's ten unknown counters. And if you break with other cards, you can just use this to unbreak, of course. And the trigger can come up if you want to. Then for our other cards, we of course play 
our boy. Four times Radical Beam. Uh, yeah, Radical Beam. Best counter card in the entire game, in my opinion. Especially for red. Uh, your leader or one of your characters gains 2000 power. If you have two or less lives, you gain 2000 more. So it's a 4k counter for only one dom. And trigger is your character or your leader gains 1000 power during this turn. So you can evenly make your leader 7k if you get it out of life. And then totally screw up your opponent's attacks if they have nothing left. If you can trigger this, it's pretty good, but uh, you want to trigger it in some special situations. And then for our last three cards, we play, of course, card point. Uh, yeah, card point is a worse radical beam. Only good point is you don't need any life requirement. And if they swing for eight, it's just you use this. If they swing for eight, always use this because it's a free. You get the most value out of it because you counter for nine then. But yeah, that's it for white bird. I still think that Whitebird is definitely one of the best decks in the format. Uh, like I said, I hope Whitebird would win in the Dreamhack, but sadly it was a Sakusuki Mirror in finals. One of my friends got into top 32 with the Whitebird. It was the dude who I went to Dream, no, to Glasgow, to versus 3, and we got 5th place. So shout out to Chinois. And yeah, uh, my matchups was round 1 Sakusuki, I lost. Round 2 Sakusuki, I lost. Pure because I said to my team, hey boys, I haven't really played a lot against Sakasuki, so I'm not really familiar with the matchup. But they won the first two games, so we actually won. And the first game we had to play against a very, very good player. He had the winner match from the regional, like the Admirals, but we beat him, so it's nice. Uh, second game, like I said, I lost against Sakasuki because I didn't know the matchup with Whitebird all too well. Third game, I played against Sakasuki. I won uh, because, yeah, like I said, Robin just carries. And then my other friend won. Oh yeah, my team was Duffy. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, Duffy95 or Duffy TCG. And then Joshua Oosters. Of course, you probably know that name if you played some other games. But yeah, uh, that was a pretty good team. Um, then we played against another team I won. And then we played against another team I won. And then we played against Johannes. It's a famous TCG player. Uh, Joshua knew him. They knew him also because they came from the same TCG. Uh, I lost that one, so we had then 5-1 it was then. Then we played against another team, he played Red Purple Law. Well, Whitebeard just clears Red Purple Law, of course, so that I won. My other teammate won, and then the last game we played against the winners from Glasgow. You probably know the dude, he has like, he's, he's always in a white tee with a blonde hair, with a top knot or something. Uh, his friend made it into... Top 32 with an L, so he didn't play, but I lost against him only in Glasgow 2 vs 3, so we came there 5th place, and they got they got first. So we lost against him, really good match, and that's it, I guess. But yeah, guys, if you like the profile, give it a like, if you dislike it, dislike it, if you want to see more content, subscribe. And that's it for me, see you guys in the next video, peace!